Hey, uh, this is a video to go with your creating and using graphs uh, sheet that you have. Uh, you should already have that in Google Classroom. Uh, just real quick, let me show you here. Uh, let's get into the right class. That's AP Physics. So when you go to your uh, Physics AP Classroom, should look, uh, sorry, regular uh, Physics Classroom, and go to Classwork. In this tab, Scientific Methods. Uh, I don't have it in here yet, but you should have your um, assignment that is called Creating and Using Graphs in this topic here, Unit 1, Scientific Methods. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that yet, uh, you need to go ahead and open that up. When you do have that, um, before you watch this video, you should read through that and do the two graphing exercises. So if you haven't done that uh, yet and you're looking at this video, you need to pause this video and go ahead and do that. The graphs you can make with either Logger Pro or Graphical Analysis 4, whichever one you downloaded. And if you haven't done that already, then go back and get uh, one of those things either installed on your Chromebook or downloaded onto your computer. All right, so assuming that you have done all of those things, you are now ready to watch this video. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and there's my copy of it here. I'm going to have that open and I'm also going to open up uh, Logger Pro. Yeah. Sorry about that announcement in the background. <laughs> All right, so I've got Logger Pro open. If you're using Graphical Analysis 4, that's going to work just fine for you. Uh, looks like Logger Pro won't let me squish that window anymore. So we'll do that. We'll just bounce back and forth. Okay, so creating using graphs, um, you've read through this. Some of the stuff I talked about in the videos uh, for downloading Logger Pro and Graphical Analysis 4, but now you have a nice hard copy of it here. So I just want to pause here on this graph and um, highlight some of the features here that are important for graphs for us. A graph always needs to have a title. The title is not whatever you feel like calling it. The title is always name of this versus name of this. And notice that the units are not included here. It doesn't have this meters per second and second in this case. That is not part of the title. It's name of this variable versus name of this variable. If you don't title it in that way, that is an incorrect title. Um, we've got nice labels on the axes, Logger Pro or Graphical Analysis 4 are gonna do that for you. Um, the scaling, uh, you can use the features of those programs to help you with the scaling or you can do it manually. And um, I think that's all I have to say there. I just need to make sure that those things are correct, make sure that you do have a title. This particular graph, there's two different things. So it has a legend, so you know which thing is which. That's not something we're going to do very much. All right, creating a line graph using a straight edge. This is assuming that you're going to graph it uh, by hand, um, which you are not. We're going to use our software to do that. And um, I think I can skip through that. All right, so um, again, if you have not already done this yourself, uh, please pause the video and do that. I'm just going to run through these exercises real quick. Um, so let's see. First thing I need to do is go ahead and I'm going to double click here. This works exactly the same in graphical analysis for if for whatever reason, if there's something I'm doing in Logger Pro and you can't figure out how to do it in graphical analysis for uh, you got to send me a message. Let me know what what's happening. Okay. So time is the name of my variable. And do not put the parentheses hours here. That is not how that works. That does not go there. Wrong. It goes here. This is hours. Oops, that's, sorry, just kidding. That is unit, it's hours. The short name for this, what do you want to call time for short? How about T? Um, okay. Uh, I don't have any, oh, I can do the generate values if I want to. You could just go through and type in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But since that's a nice pattern, I'm going to start at 0. I'm going to end at 5. 
and I'm going to go up by ones. Boom. Um, it doesn't matter. You don't have to do it that way. Just a little trick. Okay, what's this one called? This is temperature. And oh, I think I should probably capitalize that for consistency. And short name for that, I better not call it T because I used that already. So I guess I'll call that temp. And the units are degrees Celsius. Now, how do I get the degrees symbol? Hmm. Well, this little arrow right here is going to bring up some symbols for you. Greek letters, Greek letters, subscripts and superscripts. So that's uh, superscript we're going to use a lot because that's if you need something squared, right? You use that. But look, there's a little degree symbol. How about that? Degrees uh, Celsius. Cool. And I can't use the, oh, I can use the pattern thing here. I could just type them in, right? But if you look at this pattern, it's actually going down by two every time. So I can do this if I want to, or you can just type them in over here. Uh, it starts at 26 and it ends at 16. And the increment is negative two. Boom, all right. So let's see, how are we doing with our graph here? It looks pretty good. Um, anything missing? Anything missing? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Um, yeah, there is something missing. You're right, it's missing a title. So I need to right click on that, go to graph options, and the title, let's see, what should I call this? Well, there's no choice. I have to call it temperature versus time. Okay, so temp. You can use the short version if you want versus time. Done. Okay, now I got a nice title there. Notice that the units are not included in the title. Uh, this goes from zero to 10, and the time only went up to, um, I don't know, what did it go up to? Six here, so, uh, or five. So I don't need that. So I could do this um, auto scale. And that fills up the whole thing. Now, the problem with that is that that only goes down to 15, and I think I'd like to be able to see lower than that. So I think I am going to choose here auto scale from zero. Most of the time, that will be the right option for us. Um, okay, so let's see how we're doing here. Time is the independent variable. Which axis will be will time be plotted on? The independent variable goes on the horizontal axis. Um, all right, uh, what is appropriate title for this graph? We put it in there already. It's temperature versus time. The data, we did that using the straight edge, draw a line that best represents the data. That looks very straight. In fact, this is exactly a straight line. All the points are right on it. It's uh, not even a line of best fit because it's a perfect fit. Um, so to do a linear fit, I just click on the linear fit button right there. And let's see, we'll talk more about those equations soon uh, in the next video. Use, a line, uh, use the line to make the following prediction. So I'm not going to use an equation yet. We're not going to talk about that. Probably you know how to do that. You remember that from, oh, some algebra class or who knows what math class. Uh, you probably can do that um, or with a tiny bit of prodding, you could remember how to do that. Right now, I'm just going to try to make these predictions from looking at the graph. So this says, at a time of 7.75 hours, what is the temperature based on the line here, just looking at the line? So let's go back here. So when a time of 7, uh-oh, well, hmm, I don't have that on my graph. So what am I going to do there? Well, I can just click on that 5 right there, and I can make it go up to, you could just make it go up to 8. That would be fine if you felt like making it go up to 10. It doesn't matter. You can scale that however you want. I'll just pick 10 for fun. And now, if I want to go over to 7.75, I want you to notice right here in the bottom corner, I, if, as soon as I move off the graph, it disappears. But down here, right below the origin, when I go onto the graph, that tells me where the cursor is. And that's pretty handy for exploring the graph. Um, if you don't have that there, I'm going to right click on my graph 
in the same place graph options, same place where we put the title in here. Um, the, let's see, right here in examine, see this box that is checked here that says mouse position and delta. That is the thing. If I deselect that, now when I move around my graph, that's gone. So if you want that to be there and it's not, go to your graph options and turn that on. Okay. Um, also, let me just do one more. Maybe I'll do it on the next graph. These things should also be, this point symbol should be turned on. That's what makes the little circles, the little red circle around your points and connect points should be turned off. Um, this we do not want, and this we do want. Point symbols, yes, connect points, no. Sometimes it defaults to the wrong option for us there. All right, so uh, that's all good. So I can go over to here, and I want it to be 7.75. So I'm looking at those numbers down by the origin, and I'm trying to get to 7.75 as close as I can. I move over a little bit and then move up. That looks, that's pretty dang close right there. So I'm going to go with that 10.5. So when the time is 7.75, the temperature is 10.5. All right, I'm going to go with that. If you did it by looking at the graph and you have something that's really close to that, that is, okay. So 10.5, I didn't find the degree symbol, so I just put in degrees Celsius. Um, oh, I guess I could have copied this. That would be a clever thing to do. And then, there we go. Okay, so, uh, so I'm going to do the same thing here. At what time is the temperature 8.8 .8 degrees Celsius? So now I want to go and hover up this way. So I want this to be 8.8 .8 in my like Y position here. So 8.8 .8 degrees Celsius. Oh, that's pretty close. 8.78, and I just got to find my way over to the line. So if you're thinking to yourself, I know how to do math here, McGrath. Just let me do an equation. Um, that's fine. You can do that. Um, now, what do I want here? I want 8.8 .8 degrees Celsius. So I need the Y coordinate to be 8.8. .8. So I need to go back up my line a little bit. And... Oh, that looks pretty good. All right, let's go with that. So 8.6 about. Uh, if you have something that's close to that, that's fine. So I'm just getting the one coordinate to match up and looking at the other one. If you had a graph, like a printed graph or a graph that you made by hand in front of you, then um, you might, oops, that's fine. All right, so then you might just kind of like trace out on the graph that you were doing there. I don't know why I made that. There we go, 8.6 hours, or something very close to that. Um, we're just reading data out of the graph. We're just estimating from the graph here. Okay, and let's go and do this one real quick. So um, let's do new file. Don't want to save that. And um, if you do want to save your graph, I'll show you with this one. You can, um, one of the things you can do, you can of course save the, a logger pro file, uh, make a little folder somewhere in your Google Drive or on your desktop wherever you like to keep your documents and make a folder of logger pro files. Um, and there's another thing you can do too, which I will do uh, either in this video or very soon. All right, so what do we have here? Um, plot this data on an appropriate graph. Uh, let's see, material state. So this is some. This is about thermal expansion. Um, something. Uh, let's see. This is a copper rod. It gets a little bit longer when it gets real hot, and shorter when it gets cold. Um, that's a real thing. So uh, plot this data on an appropriate graph. information about which variable is independent and which is the dependent is found in the introductory paragraph above. So in this one, we're change, when the temperature changes, that changes the length. Changing the length of the rod does not make the temperature change, right? That's not the relationship. So this is independent and the length of the rod depends on what temperature it is. All right, so um, let's make our graph. 
in this column here, we have uh, temperature. Oh, I guess I should do the whole thing, temperature. And the shortening for that, the temp, and the units are degrees Celsius. Right, done. And um, I can't do the little shortcut where it puts the values in there because they're all uh, jumping all over the place. So I'll squish that over like that so I can see them and type them in. I got negative create, and then I'm gonna use a down arrow, zero, down arrow. If you hit enter, I think it moves you over. Let me try that and see what happens. I think if you just hit enter, yeah, it kicks you over to the side. You can do it in that order if you want. I like to do one column at a time. Uh, 55, uh, 35, if you're cool, and maybe you sit that way. But I'm not, I just say 55, so 242. And um, there we go. So I'm gonna go up to the top of this column, double click on that. This column is, we are measuring the length of the rod, length. And a short name for length, uh, oops, hey, that went away. What am I going to do? Oh, no. No, just double click on it again. Be right back. And um, how about uh, L for length? That should do fine. Units. I didn't use a lowercase L here, by the way, because it looks too much like other symbols, like the number one or the letter I or who knows what. So I'm going to use capital L. Units uh, looks like it's meters. Okay. There's that column titles. And then here, I'm gonna enter my lengths, 0.992, one point zero one zero, one point zero one nine, one point zero two eight. I'm clicking down these, you could use the down arrow to navigate between these cells. There's a down arrow there. 1.099. That was my grade point average when I was in high school. <laughs> Just kidding. It's higher than that. Um, okay, so got my graph here. How's it look? Length in meters, temperature in degrees Celsius. Celsius, that looks all good. Uh, anything missing? Anything? Anything? Oh, yeah. So title, not a choice, it's length versus temperature. Length versus temperature. That's all I need to do there. Just make sure that you have point symbols turned on and connect points is turned off. If we're gonna explore the graph, then you wanna have this mouse position and delta turned on. All right, what do you think about the scaling of this? Uh, not so good. It looks like everything's kind of squished. This went from 0 to 10 for length, and those do not go from 0 to 10. So I'm going to go ahead and try. Your first option, I think, should always be auto scale from 0. Let's see how you feel about that. No, that's OK. Um, the data is all kind of up here at the top because it, it's all squished right around the 1 meter. Right, This is a 1 meter copper rod. It gets a little shorter and a little longer, but um, you know, it doesn't go all the way down to zero. So I don't know, maybe you're happy with this. Maybe you're like, you know, I think I wanna maybe do the um, auto scale not from zero and see what that looks like. Oh, that's more interesting. So maybe we can see a little bit better what's going on here because uh, it fills up the graph and you can see that it's going up and it does look pretty linear. So, um, Maybe we would want to do a line of best fit here. Let's go ahead and look at the questions and see what it says. So our graph is all done. That's great. Um, okay, so using a straight edge ruler, draw a line of best fit. Okay, line of best fit. Boom. Don't need a straight edge, just need a click. Oops. Okay, so this is a, I'm glad that happened. Um, why is this happening? Why am I getting error? Please select additional points. It might be hard for you to tell, but here, I've accidentally highlighted just one of the points. So it's it thinks that I want to do a best fit just with that one point. And of course, one point does not determine a straight line. 
So all I need to do is just click on the graph and it should uh, fix that. And on whatever point I had accidentally highlighted, it should be okay now. There we go. All right. So there's the details, uh, more about this in the next video, how to write the equation for that line based on that. All right, um, use the line to make the following predictions. Um, so we're just reading out of our graph, again, not using the equation. At length, uh, sorry, at temperature equals 42 degrees Celsius. So that's on this axis. When we go to 42, then uh, what's the length? So let's see, 42, is about here, 41.5, that's pretty close, 42, so uh, that's pretty close. Oh, that's good. Uh, now I'm just gonna look at the cursor, make sure it's on the line. So I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna say 1.025, 1.025. Uh, and that is a length. That's meters. Great. How about at 340 degrees? Well, my graph doesn't go up that high. So I would need to click on this and so click on the 200, regular click, not right click, and go up to, let's go up to 350. So I have a little bit of wiggle room there. And I'm going to need to also make this go higher here, right? Because now at 340, I'm off the screen. So let's see if we make this go up to, hmm. Hmm. it's not letting me change that. This is, so this is another thing that you can do. I'm clicking, I'm just dragging that axis down. I'm clicking and dragging down. And looking over here, it looks like I have enough of it. I don't know why it wouldn't let me. No, now it's letting me just type it in. So I'm not sure why it wasn't letting me do that. But uh, that's the other way you could do that. You could just say if you wanted to go up to 1.2, if you thought that was a good bet, it's probably a little too high, but that's fine. So where are we on our axis? This is 340, this tick mark. These are going up by 20s. And I can hover over that to see that, the 340 showing up right here. And I need to go up to my graph. So at 340, it looks like the length of the rod is about 1.13. Let's go with that. Or 1.134. Keep the same number of digits that are in all these. 1.134. Is that what I said? I think that's what I said. 1.134 meters. Using this information, why do you think it's necessary for engineers to build sidewalks with slots or cracks every three feet? Well, when it gets really hot, the concrete expands. Um, and if you don't have those cracks in there, then that expansion is gonna force uh, the concrete to crack in ways that you did not want. So they put those little expansion seams in them. Um, you can see that examples of that all over the place. There are some little like pedestrian bridges on the Washington and Lee, and um, I think the BMI have any of those on those campuses that you can see those cracks also that they uh, allow for that thermal expansion. Um, all right, that's done. Um, I think I just want to show you real quick if you wanted to save this graph, but you don't necessarily need like all the log of pro stuff, you can go to here in your start menu, if you're using a Windows machine, and I'm gonna type in snip, and I'm gonna go to the snipping tool, and I'm gonna do a new snip. And you can see now my cursor, my little mouse arrow is turning to these uh, crosshairs, and I'm gonna click at the top, holding the mouse button down, I'm gonna click at the top corner, and I'm, while holding that down, I'm dragging over the whole graph. And that looks pretty good. And then I let go. And now I have this thing here that I can like cut. It's actually automatically copied onto your clipboard. So now if I created like a Word document, I already have this thing open. So if I did like uh, here, 
Oops, let me just blow that up. So if I did at the end of this document, if I decided, hey, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and throw down here using this for ruler. If I wanted to put my graph in here as part of my homework, then um, I could control V, paste. There it is. There's my graph. And uh, I can resize it. This is going to be real, <clears throat> excuse me, real important when you start doing um, lab reports and other assignments. When you need to turn things into me, this is a good way to do it. I don't want that whole logger profile. I just want to see your graph and your equation. Um, all right, so there you go. Hopefully that was helpful and uh, you'll be in good shape for doing the next two assignments. Um, have a great day or night or afternoon, wherever you're at. Uh, let me get back to here and stop. Bye.